right, we are back Summit Live here at the Moscone Center. Uh, we are here to talk everything about one of the most amazing, my favorite partnership with SAP and Databricks. And if you don't know SAP, it's like the leading application company in the world. And just speaking of like global trade, 84% of all global trade goes through SAP systems. So we recently announced this partnership, which makes a ton of sense for so many reasons and the business data cloud, which we'll be getting into. And so many positive things. One of my favorites is bringing intelligence to, uh, to SAP customers, having the platform integration, but also no need to copy data back and forth from one point to another. But let's just jump into it. We have G and Nicholas. So love to hear your back. You have an amazing both backstories, but uh, introduce yourselves, please. Sure, I'll start. So my name is Chi Su. I'm a solution architect at Databricks. Been here for about three years, leading customer engagement globally in our SAP virtual team. This, in this capacity, I work with hundreds of customers, advising them in the past about ERP, SAP ERP, BW, and the HANA and Datasphere integration. Yeah. And also, of course, this year, lots of customer conversations about business data cloud. What does that mean to the customer, depending on where they are in their ERP modernization journey? And my background is that I came from SAP, where I spent 10 years as a HANA Solutions Architect. And Nicholas? Yeah, thanks, G. Yeah, so uh, my name is Niklas. Uh, I'm a technology architect at SAP. I'm with SAP yes. now since uh, over 20 years already, and I used to be a peer also from, uh, of G. And uh, I'm focusing on data and analytics topics also since, uh, since a long time now. And uh, now taking over responsibility for the customer advisory organization oh, nice. for SAP Business Data Cloud and bringing that one to uh, our customers globally. That's super exciting. And yeah, we can't see behind here, but there's the SAP booth and all your old friends and current mm -hmm. friends. You are very popular at SAP, but we're glad you're here now and glad uh, we have this partnership. Um, so we have a, a slide deck coming up here, just a couple things so we could drill down, you know, theoretically what it's about, but, you know, let's kind of see different uh, architectures and what it all means. But, you know, we'll start, we have the CEOs of both companies, major companies, and wanted to hear you know, what was some of the feedback from them. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, Nicholas, maybe you can start about uh, you know, kind of SAP's point of view for entering into the partnership. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, that's probably the most exciting partnership we have ever released in that, uh, in the context of data and analytics and maybe every partnership that we have uh, announced so far. So uh, everybody was uh, super excited to get the capabilities of Databricks within our platform because uh, in the end, um, we see a super high adoption in the market of, uh, of Databricks at our customer base. Yeah. Yeah, and especially in the area of data and analytics, uh, we see it as a super complementary um, feature set that Databricks brings along. And, uh, yeah, and many customers asked in the past, how can we better integrate with Databricks? Yeah? And this is now the way to create one single platform, one highly integrated platform, so that customers can, can derive the best insights out of, uh, out of both uh, worlds at the end. Yeah, yeah that's super. And you know, speaking of customers, we didn't bring up like how many customers does SAP have, yeah. roughly? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm focusing on the data and analytics yeah. space. Yeah, so we have, I think, with including ERP, yeah, uh, hundreds of thousands of customers. Yeah. And uh, in the data analytics space, uh, it's of course uh, almost the same. And uh, customers come from various areas, right? From legacy systems with SAP BW, which is also something we are going to reuse as part of the platform. Also exposing BW data to Databricks in a way that is uh, was or is as easy as never before. Yeah, so uh, that's really the big uh, opportunity that I see here. For, for both of us. So. Yeah, super exciting. Since Databricks were like in the 10, 12,000 customer range and uh, you know, bigger opportunity to bring in, uh, value now jointly to everyone. So, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. so to, to that point, right? So is that for our customer base now of 10,000, 12,000 customers yeah. is that the value in this partnership is really unlocking and be able to fully leverage the power of their applica SAP application data, right? And SAP has a very wide range of applications and kind of the most well-known being ERP, right? Enterprise resource planning, that is the core financial accounting, right? When we say, hey, customer XYZ closes the books every quarter or every month, well, where does that happen? That happens in SAP ERP. Yeah. So that's the most critical, arguably the most critical structure data that enterprise has, right? And, but there's more than that, much more than that. Think about your HR system, like success factors, your do procurement, yes. to order you know, parts and inventory, things like that, right? That's done in things like Ariba. To think about your travel, and you book your travel and you do your expense report, you do that in Concur. Yes. There's all these applications generating very valuable enterprise data. Now we have access as Databricks customers via the business data cloud where SAP is gonna do the curation of those data products, right? And so that's where, you know, um, Nicholas, I'm sure we'll talk more about what is the concept of the data product, right? So 
just as another example, so one of our um, oil and gas customers mm -hmm. that is currently taking their cash flow data out of SAP ERP, and they're doing that, and they have to extract out billions of rows of the raw um, general ledger data, the financial data, and they're bringing out to AWS native services, and then they're using uh, the machine learning services in those hyperscaler services to do the uh, model training, to do prediction, to do forecasting. And then they're bringing it back into the SAP ecosystem to, to Datasphere to as their cloud data warehouse. And that is, you know, that's billions of rows that they're moving back and <laughs> forth and also spending a lot of time putting the logic together to, to bring the logic of the uh, cash flow or to understand the cash flow business logic, right? So that's a lot of work. And now one of our consulting partners is working on using business data cloud to bring out the data product. Yes. And this is where, I mean, technically we're not even bringing it out, right? Because we're doing zero copy delta sharing and we're not really moving the data is that Dataverse compute is able to directly compute and do machine learning using ML flow to do the forecasting on that. And that's very powerful. Yeah, that, yeah I, I could not agree more. Yeah. So actually the, the data that once that we extract from our systems into one single platform now, which is business data cloud, yeah, that ex can be exposed now to the superior tooling that Databricks brings along to derive additional insights due to machine learning, yeah. AI, uh, Proco data engineering capabilities and so on. And that's actually something in the yeah. past our customers had to extract data physically out uh, to get access to that. And that's now something we are solving with business data cloud and the concept of data products. Yeah. Uh, and so this, this, this is a diagram that we're showing to customers, yeah. right, about okay, the business data cloud. And Nicholas can talk more about that. This, um, the whole, all the, the portfolio of products, including some existing data, uh, existing SAP capabilities, but also some new capabilities. Uh, for example, the data products, and also we can talk about how the Databricks, uh, the different pictures of Databricks in here, uh, that's also part of the partnership as well. So Nicholas, maybe you want to start a little bit starting with the data products? Sure, yeah, what are data products? And that's also something that's of course also not a new or SAP native concept, yeah? Data, uh -huh. the concept of data products uh, is out there since a whole while, yeah? and we have adapted that now and taken that one to the next level on SAP data sets. In the end, a data product for us is a highly curated, semantical rich data set mm -hmm. that we provide as part of the platform ready for consumption out of the box. And consumption for us means not only, let's say, the classical enterprise reporting, BI, and uh, those kind of scenarios, but this also the second big workload that we see with our customers. And that's uh, AI, ML, and getting advanced analytical insights where our, our customers actually in the past had to extract the data out physically move it, yep. yeah, and now we are providing, uh, let's say, already in a medallion architecture, a kind of a product which is maybe silver or even gold, so that you can consume that and, and work on that with a, a superior Databricks tooling, which you're offering. Yeah. Great, and I see two red, two reddish boxes. Mm -hmm. Chi, uh, why don't you, that has Databricks in there. How yep. does that fit in? Yeah, so the, the box on the right is what we are turning uh, native Databricks. So that's what customers already own. There are existing 12,000 customers already own. So very important part of the partnership is SAP Databricks. So this is where SAP is OEMing Databricks, right? So that's one of the first is that it's a second for, it's only the second time that we at Databricks as OEM, right? The first time was Azure Databricks, which was right. wildly successful. And we have very similarly high expectations for this partnership as well for SAP Databricks, right? So that uh, OEM version of Databricks is really a tailored version of Databricks that's seamlessly integrated with BDC to allow our customers, especially with SAP centric um, the data gravity use cases to be able to do AML, data exploration, and so on kind of workloads on that, right? And then, of course, the existing Databricks customers can also leverage those Databricks, uh, those uh, SAP BDC curated data product concepts that um, Nicholas is talking about. All, both of, in both cases, SAP Databricks as well as native Databricks can consume those data products in a zero copy delta sharing way, right? Without actually physically moving the data into the Databricks lake house. Yeah, that's true. And uh, I mean, our customers are, are diverse out there yeah, and they have different landscapes and architectures. And that's something that we, of course, also have to cater for. Right. So giving our, our customers all opportunities uh, to make best out of that data and leverage basically the best uh, of the tooling in the end. Yeah? Yeah, very cool. I'm just looking the delta sharing like that arrow looks bidirectional. So what are some of these uh, use cases to uh, bring up Databricks to BDC? Nicholas? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's exactly uh, what makes a partnership so powerful in the end, yeah, because with data products, with intelligent applications, we are providing much out-of-the-box value on SAP data, 
yeah, which yeah. our customers can, can leverage and benefit from immediately when leveraging business data cloud. Now, maybe those insights are not enough and customers need to extend those insights and enhance that with the capabilities that you have in, in Databricks. Yeah? Enhance those data products, create your own data products, and bring those data products back into business data cloud. So not, not one directional, but be directional cool. in order to, uh, yeah, to get those insights actually um, leveraged in both uh, environments, also with the audiences that are working with those environments. Environments. Yeah. yeah, so I think even taking that one step further is that not just an analytical feedback loop of feeding back the analytics from the Databricks, whether it's ML driven or IoT or non SP data or whatever, back into the data sphere environment, but also I think it's very powerful this possibility of actually taking action. Is okay, so, you know, maybe from the inside, think about predictive maintenance, right? Our ML in Databricks says, oh, okay, you know, this particular wind turbine needs to be serviced because it's going to break soon. So then potentially bringing it back to Datasphere and then Datasphere integrates back with SAP's and asset management capability or applications, transactional applications, to go issue a work order, to go have somebody go look at that, right? So I think that's very, very interesting to that end-to-end -end feedback loop. Yeah, exactly. And the use cases are endless in the end. Yeah. So especially when it comes to big data sets where our customers did not see so much value putting those into SAP technology, like IoT data maybe, weather data, sensor data, these kind of things, right? Now uh, in a zero copy to mesh those up into, in yeah. one platform. That's like where the big power comes from. Yeah, you know? Yeah. zero uh, copy is exactly. super key. Exactly. So yeah, th this is uh, the roadmap EDC. I'd like to hear more thoughts on what are some of the key items. Yeah, sure. I mean, we are, we are super excited now that we have launched the product. And of course, uh, one big topic is the data products that we will bring into the market for each single LOB, meaning success factors, S4HANA, Conquer, Ariba, and so on, right? And that's something that we, will, uh, that we are working on with, uh, at full speed. Yeah, and uh, th that's why we have uh, of, um, 480 LOB data products in the pipeline now, which we will now release until the end of the year, including the intelligent applications that come on top of that. And uh, yeah, this is something um, which our customers are looking for, including things like free trials that uh, where they can test the solution, do PUCs, etc. So yeah, well, that's the exciting times that we have ahead of us now. Well, super cool. We have like under two minutes left. First of all, I want to make sure everyone watching, there's a URL. On the bottom, free trial, including the SAP Databricks. So be sure to, to go there. It's super exciting. Um, uh, what are some initial customer reactions? Also, I mean, maybe start on my side. Right? So customers are, there's a ton of interest from our 12,000 customers. Everyone wants to know, as I said in the introduction, right? customers want to know how can they leverage BDC and what part of BDC they can leverage depending on where they are in their ERP modernization journey. Right, so kind of probably the number one question is, okay, I am a S4 on-premise customer versus I'm on S4 on rise or I'm an ECC customer. What are the parts of the BDC can I use, right? Do I have to be on a certain flavor of ERP to be able to leverage BDC, right? So there's an answer for all of these ERP scenarios. You get a lot of value out if you're on S4 on rise and you be able to get the curated data products that uh, Nicholas was talking about. But even if you're not, right, you, you might be a success factors customer, a Reba customer and so on, and you can leverage the same concept of SAP curating those data products for you. And if you're on ECC on-premise, you can also still leverage custom data product, customer managed data products as well. Correct, yeah. Yeah, absolutely true. I mean, we have customer journeys for each segment, basically, exactly like you uh, just described. Yeah, And uh, of course, we will also deploy business data cloud on each hyperscaler in the future so that we can also serve basically also the, the legacy environments of our customers where they might have invested already in a certain technology. Yeah, We make that re reusable and seamlessly integrated. Great. Well, we are going to be wrapping up. Um, I know you're just traveling around the world. Sapphire is like a massive conference. Uh, like any, any final thoughts on what you're here, how customers could get started in different phases that they're at? Yeah, so I will say that for our, for our Databricks customers, definitely reach out to your account team to say, hey, we want to have a conversation about SAP, right? And also, you are, I'm sure you're having the similar conversation with your SAP account team as well. And we can definitely get all and get in the room and kind of share our joint vision about business data cloud, what that means to the customer, and happy to have deep dive conversation with customers. Great. Yes. All right. So uh, thank you so much. This is like honestly the most exciting announcement. Two amazing companies, and looking forward uh, to, to that journey. So thank Thanks you for sharing. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Ari. Thank you. Thank you.